I think we're on. I hope we're on. Here we go. Once again, I'm wondering whether things are working and hoping that they are. Um, hi, everybody, and happy spring equinox. It says live, so I think it's working. Um, and uh, yeah, okay, so I know what's going to happen is that comments will start to appear and then I'll know that everything's working properly. I was having trouble getting started. Bixby kept trying to take over my my Facebook Live, uh, my, my cell phone. And uh, it was very frustrating. Well, it was, it was a virus, right? Um, so anyway, hi, everybody. It's Spring Equinox and uh, 2020. And it's the um, moment of perfect balance between light and dark. And um, a moment when that balance is tipping towards light. And down in Australia, where we have a lot of folks who will be joining us uh, and where we have uh, friends and colleagues and folks who are still trying to recover from the fires and now dealing with the pandemic, um, uh, it's the fall equinox. So for them, it's um, not the moment of emerging from the earth, but the moment of entering um, into the earth of uh, quiet and reflection. We're kind of joining them, aren't we, though, because we're uh, all of us now in... Um, uh, periods of deep reflection as we confront this pandemic, which is what I wanted to talk to you about tonight. Um, and specifically, hey there, Emily. Hi there, Irene. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to be a little handicapped tonight because I, I came rushing up to my office without my glasses. So if I don't say hi, as I usually do, it's because I don't have my glasses. Uh, but I did have the good sense to print out my notes in 16 point type. So I hope you're all doing well um, and you're managing. This is truly um, a time of global crisis and uh, we're a global community. So I know people will be um, joining us from Australia and Norway and Switzerland and um, Italy, poor exhausted Italy, where we have such a large community and, and truly treasured family. Um, so, um, and I send you, by the way, uh, some greetings from uh, Josephine Winter, who's the president of the Pagan Collective of uh, Victoria, with whom we've been in touch. And uh, she's an example of how we sustain, uh, how we create community. Hi there, Yoka. Oh, my goodness. A, a dear old friend who I miss very much, um, who's in Holland. Um, hi, Stephanie. Happy Equinox. Oh, it means the world. Um, that people I love are uh, tuning in tonight. There's Chris. Hey, everybody. Joanne from Vancouver. Beautiful Vancouver. And uh, Josephine. Hey, hi, Josephine. Um, how wonderful. From Australia. I was just talking about you. Um, and uh, the Pagan Collective of Victoria, which has a Facebook page for folks down in Australia to stay connected and, and um, to find various ways of being mutually supportive in this tough, tough time. Hi, Wendy. Hello. Wendy, it's his top fan. <laughs> uh, hi, Jill. Lovely to see you. Mwah. Kisses to everybody. Folks are piling on now. Hey there. Hey. Hi, Therese. Good evening. Good to see you. Hi. Well, to see your name. There we go. You guys are seeing me. Be lovely. Well, some of you, right? There's a little tiny picture next to your name. So I get a little tiny picture of you. There, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Isabel Lopez. Hope you're good. Yes, it is crazy. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. Hi, Richie. Hello. How are you, dear? So great that you're joining us. Thank you. So we'll just say hi a little longer because people keep tuning in, which is wonderful. I've really been looking forward to this. Um, um, I will be, as I always am, really honest, probably a little more personal tonight. I mean, I, you know, I, you guys are getting to know me if you didn't already, and, and you know that I have a tendency to talk big picture, and I'm more comfortable with philosophy and things like that, and global issues and, and, and great magics than um, in personal revelation. I know that sounds odd, given Book of Shadows and the Love Spell, but... Um, but I am a real private person. It's taken me a long time to get used to social media. Um, but I really was looking forward to tonight in part because I am socially distancing. We really officially started this week. We did our stocking up over the weekend. Probably shouldn't have. Um, 
given the number of folks uh, who are um, now testing positive for the virus out here. I live on the east end of Long Island. It's um, the northern part of the fishtail at the end of Long Island. Very rural, lots of retirees, figured good place to be. Um, not quite West Virginia, but I figured, you know, we were gonna be safe out here for quite a while. Nope, last week we had our first case. Um, and in less than a week, we're up to um, 33 confirmed. And now I would say 35, because shortly after um, uh, I worked on my little notes today, I heard from one of my uh, dearest friends who lives out here and uh, both she and her husband, she was feeling kind of under the weather. And on Monday she went and she got tested because she was feeling more than a little bit under the weather and she tested positive. Uh, and her husband is sick as well. Um, and I, there's a good chance that I have it now and that my beloved uh, also has it. And um, so it's, uh, it's about as close to home as it could be. I'm hoping um, that we're okay, but we might not be. We've had a few symptoms. My biggest concern is for him because he has um, one liter short in his lung. And so he is very vulnerable to um, flus turning into pneumonia and he's, um, he's at risk. He's a high risk person. So, um, so our strategy was to stay home and uh, stock up and stay home and use the time here um, to be together and um, to be outside, to spend time with our dog, with our garden, with the trees and all the things that are starting to grow now and to take care of the house, to do our taxes. Um, I'm editing um, the final uh, proofs of the text for the Witch's Wisdom Tarot, which we hope the plan was for it to come out in October. Um, and certainly we could all use a good divination tool and I think it's pretty wonderful. I'll, I'll tell you about it another time. So I'm working on that and then I was about to start the proposal for um, my next book. Lots to do. Uh, and uh, attention to daily practice. But this coming home so fast, um, truly fast, uh, has, it hasn't changed what I wanted to say but it's made it more immediate, more personal, um, more anxiety producing. I was, I thought I was, you know, dealing with a normal amount of stress like everybody else and using my spiritual um, techniques and practices and my understanding of magic and my enormous appreciation for it and my deep gratification, um, deep gratification, uh, uh, gratitude to Mother Earth uh, for her healing and love and nourishment. Um, and now that's gonna get uh, put it put to the test even more so. So, um, so the talk tonight is about dealing with the stress of the C-19 pandemic, which is all over the world now. And right here, uh, possibly sitting in this seat. Um, and I really wanted to focus on how our spiritual practices and our spiritual wisdom, um, our magical techniques, our understanding of what magic is and how um, to work with magic during this uh, incredibly um, dangerous and difficult and stressful period um, can help us, how it can help us get through this time and how our spiritual wisdom can help us get through this time. Um, so that's what I'm going to talk about. And, and I guess I'll be talking about it in a more intimate and personal way. We'll see. Uh, and if we have time, at the end of uh, the evening, I was going to take you over to another part of my office where I have set up a very small, very, very simple little spring equinox altar um, and uh, do a little bit of uh, spring equinox um, gratitude giving uh and magic that i would share with you so um so i i'm gonna just i got my notes i'm just gonna use them to help me stay on track and and keep me from wandering off so i mean 
we all know the, the definition, whether we're new witches or old witches, right? I mean, it's a deeply ingrained part of me because it was the first definition that I learned and it stayed with me for a really long time and it, and it didn't really um, undergo reevaluation until I wrote Book of Shadows and then especially when I wrote my second book, Witchcrafting. Um, and then again, it went through another shift, yet another shift when I wrote Wicca Made Easy uh, two years ago. And, um, but the first definition is still um, uh, the place where you begin. I always say, right? Begins in the, in the east, in the air, in the realm of the mind and consciousness. Matt, the, the, this early definition that, um, that we're all familiar with, magic is the art of changing consciousness at will, right? And then, you know, from there we go on with this idea that having changed consciousness at will, we're able to change the circumstances of life, of our own life and the world around us through consciousness, which raises lots of questions about what consciousness is. And, you know, you guys know I've written a lot about magic as being uh, far more than just intention and willpower, which is how lots of young witches are practicing. That's ceremonial magic and it doesn't make its way all the way around the circle. So tonight I want to talk about magic that goes full circle, that, that goes all the way around from the mind, um, not just to the will, but to working with energy and what, what energies we want to work with, not just will, but energies of joy, transformative energies. Um, and then to the West, to the realm of the heart and emotions and our feelings um, and how those feelings connect us to others. One of the things that we learned uh, while journeying uh, to create the Witch's Wisdom Tarot were how the elements were uh, revealing themselves to us and showing us new ways of understanding them and so understanding ourselves and of working with them. And one of the most extraordinary things was that consciousness, the mind, isn't simply about mental focus or even intuition as well as intellectual powers, but is about what is consciousness? It is awareness. Awareness of what? Awareness of truth, of reality. What is that great truth? It's love, in fact. Um, and we often think of love as um, the element of water, but it's also present in the element of air. And, the, and we think of air as um, communication, which it is, but water told us that it is in fact a messenger. Whatever we put in water is carried through the rest of the world. So the art of changing consciousness is not just a question of willpower, it's also a question of the heart, and it's a question of the body, of the actions that we take of acting in accord with the intentions that we set and of the principles, the organizing principles of the, of the, uh, the world of creation in which we reside. Um, so magic is the art of changing consciousness at will in keeping with the wisdom of the heart, motivating the right actions and the right relationships um, and when we use it properly, it's a, it is a way of transforming stress into peace and dis-ease into health and disconnection, which has been the great malady of Western civilization and even Eastern to some extent, um, of transforming disconnection into connection um, and making change, making those changes in a time of acute stress when circumstances keep changing and there's constant uh, provocation and reasons for real objective reasons for anxiety um, requires not just a shift in, in consciousness or attitude, but that requires action. That requires action. Um, one of the things that I think um, that I'm seeing right away, which is a, um, magical shift in consciousness that I'm hearing on the media and that I hope that I'm seeing um, is the expression over and over and over again now, and especially coming from doctors, that we're all connected, right? That what you do affects me and what I do affects you. That is the lesson that this virus is bringing us. It's bringing us others as well. But that is probably the single most important lesson. It's a lesson that witches know, that Wiccans know, that uh, indigenous peoples know, that 
uh, people who are practicing uh, the revivals of, of Euro Indigenous and African Indigenous traditions, uh, Indigenous traditions around the globe know that everything is interconnected and that everything is interdependent, that what we do has impacts immediately on the world around us, the world in which we live and those with whom we live it. If I'm sick, the person with whom I am living that I love is probably sick now. My dear, dear friends who I adore and who I try to see every week, at least once a week, are sick. I, it's possible I'm if they're sick, I'm sick. I may not be sick because of them. It could be somebody in the supermarket. It could have been at the doctor's office uh, two weeks ago. There are a million points of contact in a daily life, moments of exchange and interaction. Any one of those could have been, and many of those by now, could have been um, the source of my becoming sick if I'm sick. Maybe I'm not, but I might be. Um, and so this realization through this virus that is connecting all of us, that in fact, we are all connected and that what I do affects you and what you do affects me. Your actions can save my life or can take my life. And it's never been so starkly clear. Uh, because our lives are at stake, we're learning the lesson. And it's said that a species evolves when its survival depends upon it. And so this fundamental principle of interconnection and what that means for how we live on this very tiny planet, on this, in this global culture that we're a part of, where we're all traveling from one end of the world to the other in the space of a few hours, where we are all connected, where a little sick bat in, on the other side of the world, in Wuhan, China, has been the reason that we're dealing with pandemic and my dear friends down the road from me are now sick. It's never been so clear because our lives are at stake. It's visceral, it's immediate. And if it hasn't affected you, it will affect someone you know and someone you love. And at some point it might affect you. It's affecting all of us. And so the lesson is there for us in ways that we have forgotten, that we've forgotten for thousands of years, that we are all connected. And so what I do affects you and what you do affects me and what we do affects the planet, right? The entire planet and what I do affects someone on the other side of the planet. So now is the moment for us as we awaken to that, to also awaken to the challenge that we can do this in the right way. We can be connected in the right way. We can treat one another and the planet and the other creatures that share this planet with us. We can treat them in the right way or we'll suffer the consequences. So magic, this art of changing consciousness is already happening. People are awakening. Their consciousness is uh, awakening. And everyone is talking about how we're connected and how we're dependent upon one another. And they're also beginning to talk about the impulse of kindness, coronavirus kindness. It reminds me a great deal of uh, the way New York was uh, after 9-11. It was um, uh, heartbreaking and also probably um, the most wonderful place in the midst of such pain and suffering and loss and sorrow. Um, and genuine heartbreak, it was also one of the most wonderful places in the world you could possibly live at that time because people were so kind and careful with one another. And in a certain sense, um, we are evolving and becoming a culture of kindness. Obviously, we're seeing the opposite. There was a, um, a fellow who was um, uh, on television tonight. I think he was on CNN um, in the hospital. They were filming him and he was talking about what it felt like and what he was experiencing and how incredibly difficult it was for him. And it, it, you know, his life has been in danger and he's been receiving um, texts and messages and emails, etc., from people who've been um, saying that he's been lying and an astonishing measure of cruelty. That, however, is the exception and not the rule. Um, so 
ironically, one of the things that we've been told to do, just to talk briefly about some of the practical things, put magic aside, which is eminently practical, practical magic, but already the ways in which we can begin to conduct ourselves so that we are taking care of one another, so that we're conscious and aware that how I behave um, will affect you and how you behave will affect me, is ironically, it's social distancing. That's one of the most fundamental things that we can do because it will, quote, flatten the curve. It's the means by which we slow down the transmission of this virus so that we don't overwhelm the hospital system, which is already overwhelmed, doesn't have enough masks, doesn't have enough protective equipment, doesn't have enough protective clothing. Um, they don't have the plastic face shields. We don't have enough ventilators, respirators. Um, and it's absolutely essential because the rate of transmission is accelerating past uh, what's happening in Italy, where uh, so many loved ones are right now. Um, it's absolutely essential that we flatten the curve to save the health care system, to save lives. So hashtag stop the, stop the spread. This is from the World Health Organization. Um, and they have seven basic tips to keep you safe and to help um, contain the spread of this virus. The first is to wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds. They say that if you sing happy birthday, that's about 20 seconds. Okay. Avoid touching your face, uh, your eyes, your mouth, your nose. I didn't realize how often I do that in the course of, of um, 15 minutes uh, until uh, I was told not to do it. Avoid contact with people who are vulnerable. That would be my beloved with whom I live. Um, and if you can't avoid that contact, wear a mask, if you can get one. Um, and now if you can't get a mask, they're suggesting, they're telling hospital folks uh, to use a bandana, better than nothing. Cover your cough, um, cough into the bend in your elbow. Disinfect surfaces that you use regularly. They've been talking about using alcohol to deal with this, but uh, bleach Clorox also for cleaning surfaces. And they say that if you feel unwell, you stay at home, which is what we've been doing, and you call your healthcare provider. And if you can, you try to get tested. And a very interesting final point, which was only share information from trusted sources. So one of the things that is causing a lot of stress is that a lot of us are media news junkies. And so it's on constantly and we need to turn it off. The advice for that is to sit, you must be informed. It's information is power. And so you need to know what's going on, especially in a crisis where things are constantly changing and there are, you know, orders or requests and, and now orders are coming from the government. Things are being shut down, etc. So you need to know what's happening, but it's recommended that you basically not uh, news binge, but you pick a couple of trusted sources or you check in midday, check in at the end of the day. Don't check in right before going to bed. Check in with Stephen Colbert or something that's going to amuse you. Don't check in with something stressful right before bedtime. So there are a number of um, uh, symptoms of um, COVID-19 stress. So fatigue, irritability, having trouble sleeping, rapid breathing, panic breathing, uh, heart racing, difficulty concentrating, uh, the feeling that you get a, with panic attacks, that things are out of your control, obsessive thoughts, um, and anxiety about getting sick. Uh, and one of the first pieces of advice for dealing with that is to get the information. I'm, as those of you who know me know, I'm a big advocate of being informed, of knowing what the truth is, of really looking at a situation because information is power. And if you understand what's going on, you understand the nature of the disease, you understand uh, the virus, you understand what symptoms feel like, you understand what to do about it, how to conduct yourself, you begin to have power over yourself and over your life in a situation that's very um, um, disempowering, that makes you feel like you're helpless and you're vulnerable, but you're not. So gathering facts about it can help you stay focused on problem solving rather than worrying about worst case scenarios, you're focused on how to solve the problem. What are the steps that you need to take? Last week we were focused on getting things done because we knew that it would get worse. So we took care of all those things. Then we went and we did our shopping. So if you're in an area, if you're in a state where you're not dealing with this yet, you wanna you cover your face, stay six feet away from people, go and stock up, don't hoard, but get fundamentals that will take you through two weeks if there's a decision that people need to stay at home. 
uh, social distance at home, which is the decision that we made this week. And we took that action proactively after we'd stocked up without hoarding. We stocked up two weeks, lots of pasta and as you know, frozen vegetables to stay healthy. And, um, so select a couple of reliable sources for information, stay educated, listen to it once or twice a day, midday, and then, you know, no news before bedtime. Um, you can get more information from the CDC or the World Health Organization or from a trusted source. Pick a trusted source. There are four other things that are enormously helpful in dealing with stress. And they're all connected to working with magic. So I'm going to go over those four. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about basic, simple, wonderful, easy, gorgeous, magical practices that you can use that relate to each of these that can help de-stress you and not only de-stress you, but help you to look at this period of social distancing, staying home. You may be in a situation where they've sent you home from work and you don't have a choice about this or, you know, or, um, all the bars are closed, everything's closed. You're accepting responsibility. If we stay at home for the next two weeks, which may be very difficult, but restaurants are closing, bars are closing. Most of the places of business around where I live are closing down. New York is New York City is closing down. So you may be in a situation where you don't, in fact, have a choice to stay home. We've chosen to stay home. I can work from home. Uh, Phil can work from his barn. So we're able to make that choice. Other people are not able to make that choice. It's been made for them. And there's a lot to talk about with how we sustain and support one another financially and in terms of practical help. Um, we're trying to help our neighbors who aren't able to go out and who are in high risk situations. Um, but let's talk now about how you and those you love who are with you and your community, your magical community. I mean, there's the obvious stuff, right? That you can use FaceTime, that you can use Facebook Live, that you can work online together, that you can cast circle together. I was very dubious about that, but it's very powerful and very effective. You can meet, you can see each other, you can talk to each other. So you're at a safe, a socially safe distance, but you're still connected, which is incredibly important. There are lots of ways of doing that. We're blessed that we have the internet. Here are four things. Sleep, very important. Doing things that are enjoyable, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Using this time in a certain sense of the magic of changing consciousness at will so that you focus on this not as um, a period of confinement, but of a period of introspection that you've been given a gift of two weeks that you can use now for the things that you haven't done, the things you've put off, spring cleaning, cleaning up my office, it's one of my, it's on the list. I've got a long list. As soon as I said, all right, you have two weeks, here you are, what are you gonna do? So you're gonna finish the edit of, of the text for the Witch's Wisdom Tarot. You're gonna start the proposal, you're gonna do your taxes and you're gonna clean your office because I moved in, but I haven't had time because I've been working so hard for the last two years to unpack all those back boxes. So things that are enjoyable, Movement. Number three, movement. Getting outside. Even in, in um, San Francisco, where people now have been told that they have to stay home for the next two weeks and everything's been shut down, which may happen now in New York, uh, etc. You can still go outside. You have to keep six feet between you and other people, but you can go outside. You can get out and get some exercise. And even more important than exercise, is getting outside in Mother Nature and spending time outside. The greatest magic is the magic that we make in nature because nature makes the greatest magic. So being outside is a way of healing. It's a way of de-stressing. It's a way of being reconnected. And as I'm speaking to you, a beautiful moth, it's warm enough, it's the spring equinox, a beautiful moth just came and fluttered against my window because I have my lights on saying hello to you all. So movement. So there's ecstatic dance. I'm going to go back over this as I move through the um, magical practices. Sleep, doing things that are enjoyable, movement, and connection. Those are the four things that are recommended for dealing with stress. Right? So we have a vast, gorgeous toolbox, a spiritual toolbox 
toolbox, um, a spiritual technology, which is utterly simple. I mean, you know, it's been more than, oh my gosh, it's been 40 years more that I've been practicing and it's gotten simpler and simpler and simpler. We have beautiful, simple, easy, accessible, magical, spiritual practices that can enhance these four ways of minimizing stress, of de-stressing. So let's go back to sleep. Dream magic, right? We all know about dream magic. So if you have, a, uh, if, you, if you're lucky and you have a store of herbs, the herb that, that um, many of you who've been doing this work for a while will know, and those of you who are just beginning, it's mugwort. You ask the mugwort if it'll work with you. You take some, you hold it in your hands, you warm it, you ask if it'll work with you. You wrap it. You're always told to stuff it into a, a, a little muslin bag, but you don't have to do that. You can use um, a, a cotton napkin or a handkerchief. We don't use cotton handkerchiefs anymore. We have a little cotton bandana or uh, a cotton uh, uh, napkin. And you put it under your pillow when you go to sleep and you ask for a dream that will bring you a sign or a guide or guidance. You keep a dream journal next to your bed. And before you get up in the morning, whatever you remember from your dream, and it may just be a, a little patch of something. Excuse me, I'm going to cough, which is, I've had a cough for the last few days, so <coughs> I'm a little short of breath. Mm. Write down whatever you remember. And do it quickly because dreams have a tendency to evaporate as we awaken. But if you write them down, you know, you write down the, the essential image or message that you received, you can write about it at greater length later, but you want to get the, the essence of that dream down. You can do that every night, or you could do it every other night because it can be a little much to do it every night. You can use this time to get a good deep sleep and to do simultaneously do dream work. Extraordinary. If you're having trouble getting to sleep, herbs like lavender, chamomile, um, and of course, liquid melatonin, which is organic, will help you to fall asleep, right? So the melatonin, for example, under the tongue, read, listen to music, don't look at a screen, the blue light um, activates the brain, makes it more difficult to fall asleep. So turn off your computer, turn off your phone, put all of that away, goes under your tongue, read for a few minutes or listen to some music until you grow sleepy. And when you feel yourself getting sleepy, you turn out the light, go to sleep. You can also bathe using those herbs. A warm bath right before going to bed will help you fall asleep more easily. It'll help set your clock and keep your biological clock set. When your body is working well, your magic works well. Okay, so a warm bath right before bed, asking the water, asking the herbs if you want to. Epsom salts, if you have any, wonderful, um, will relax your muscles and will relax you. When your body is relaxed, the magic that you can do, the sleep, the dream magic that you can do, um, is very powerful and very effective. It's not just a question of the mind, it's a question of the body. So you prepare the body with a warm bath, with some melatonin, with a, a cup of chamomile tea. And um, you can take the chamomile uh, tea leaves uh, and you can, uh, or the, um, if you have that, what, one of the, you know, the sleep, sleepies tea, and you can put those, you can put the tea bag right into the bath water with you um, and use that to help do a relaxing uh, bath that will help you to sleep. Enjoyable practices. I mean, magic is fun. I always used to say when I had a group, I would um, always say that, let me just see if I can scroll up. Will it work now? Okay. Um, I always used to say, if you're not laughing, you're not doing it right. I mean, there are times when we cry and, and times when feeling stressed is a perfectly reasonable reaction. It's stressful to lose your job or to be told to go home. Um, for the next month when you have bills to pay. Uh, and thank heavens, this time around, there's real conscious attention uh, to not just bailing out corporations, but to helping people. So hopefully all of that will go through expeditiously and that stress will be removed. 
um, in a practical way, where those who can help us will act in accord with the kindness and the connection and the how we behave affecting others um, and they'll act responsibly and that stress will be removed. The daily practices that you enjoy will get you through uh, isolation and will get you through the stress. It will diminish the stress. So uh, something that you do all the time or intended to do but have it as a daily practice this is the perfect time to do it this is your two week three week window of opportunity and if you're still going if you're a doctor or a nurse or taking care of someone or you have um, a job that requires you to be uh, engaged and busy and working and taking care of people if you're a police officer or a fire person or a provider of essential services or you're in the in the supply chain or you're still working these things become even more important. And so we're going to, I'm going to talk briefly about some of the small practices that you can do um, because, um, because small practices have great power. That's why one of the things I've learned over these many years is that the simpler it is, the smaller it is, the more powerful it is. Um, you could, the, okay, so these are things that you can do alone. And yet at the same time, you know that there are people all over the world uh, who are part of this community who are doing it with you. And so in doing it together, we're supercharging it. We're charging the energy that is emitted into the universe through our work. Um, yeah. And it's expanding it for ourselves and for everyone. So it's also an, this is an opportunity for you to do consciously, deliberately, and consistently a practice that you love, or for you to use a practice that you've been intending to work with but hadn't, and to begin to explore that. This is a time for you um, to truly cultivate your relationship with the magic within you and the magic that exists in the world all around you. Repeating my definition of magic, it is not simply the art of changing the consciousness at will. That's just a small step. Magic is the word that I use to describe the divine energy that flows into you when your heart opens and practices that quiet the mind and open the heart and invite that energy into you. It flows into you. And then the techniques that we use, ritual, spell casting, chanting, dancing, drawing a sigil, if that's what you like to do, carving a candle, making a poppet, however you craft your magic, is you working with that energy and then offering it to the world. Right? Ultimately, your life is your magic. How you live your life in the world, connected to the rest of the world, is the expression of your magic and of the magic of creation flowing into you and flowing through you into the world. My practice that I use every day, rain, snow, no matter, sick, not sick, I go outside and I honor the four directions and with I have a jar of bird seed I rattle I honor the, the air and clarity, the south, energy, especially joy these days, the west, water, love, and the messages of love that I want to communicate now and receive, north, healing, one of the gifts that we were given in the work that the journey that we did for the deck that it's not just the element of creativity or birth or rebirth or fertility. It's the element of healing, of acting in accord, of action. And then back to the east again, to the sun above that draws forth life, that is the essence of energy for us. And the earth below, when we're connected to the earth, we are healthy, we are sustained, we are loved, we are supported. We're never stronger than when we're connected to the earth. And we're always connected to the earth. Change the consciousness, step one. Take off the, the, the blindfold, see where you are, and you begin to discover all the ways in which your life is sustained and nourished and healed by Mother Earth. That connection can bring us through this period of social distance, social isolation. So we substitute the forgotten connection that is always present for the social connection 
and in, and we come back to ourselves to the lost parts of ourselves and when we return to social connection we do it more fulfilled more awake more uh, energized more loving healthier more able to be fully present with people and the world itself because we are um, whole we are more whole if this is a period to reconnect to the essence of who we are in nature which is a reflection of who we are and an expression of who we are and a part of who we are it's an opportunity for us to go outside so air a very simple practice air magic green breathing inside if you can't go outside if you're in a city open the windows stand at the window and breathe in if you can see a plant so much better if you have a house plant you do it with the plant you inhale and exhale three deep breaths in and out and allow the mind to grow quiet and still and you'll feel your body calming and the stress diminishing your heart rate slowing and your mind growing clear air clarity air connection as you inhale the fourth breath you bring your consciousness art of changing consciousness at will you bring your consciousness your attention your mental focus to the reality of what is happening as you're inhaling there is a deep profound connection that is sustaining your life you are receiving the breath of life from the green plants who are coming back to life today on the spring equinox life is returning here in the northern hemisphere you inhale and you're receiving a gift of life exhale and return that to the plants that breath is a healing breath that counterbalances the anxiety of inhaling a virus it is the daily reality the virus is the momentary the transitory reality the daily reality the constant reality that you are living in all the time every breath is connecting you to the green web of life so you breathe consciously and you achieve that clarity that calm and that connection every day start the day a few minutes a few breaths people say they can't meditate I'm like don't meditate breathe green breathe breathe consciously pay attention to what is happening when you inhale and you receive this blessing and you exhale and you return the blessing five breaths the first time ten a few days later longer right as you do it it gets easier and easier when you are aware and experiencing the fullness of what's happening so air it clears it calms and it connects you to this greater reality you can write something you can chant something you can journey you can do divination a morning divination what do I need to know the mind okay? consciousness but using intuition and other gifts what do I need to know to have the best possible day today? What do I need to do to have the best possible day today? You work with incense, you can draw, you can work with music. Fire. Fire is energy. It's the power of transformation. It's growing stronger every single day. You can get up first thing in the morning and greet the sun. Morning, a morning sun salutation. When I go outside, I greet the sun. I reach up and I bring it into my heart and into my uh, solar plexus the energy the 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 energy center in, in the body get up be grateful for being healthy even if you're sick that you're you're that you're home okay you could be sicker and that you're alive that moment of gratitude and that rush of energy that comes into you with the morning sun I always experience that as the energy of joy and lo and behold when we were journeying that's what fire told us it's not just will or power or courage it's joy the greatest transformative energy that you can bring to any task to any challenge is joy and usually gratitude realizing the things that we have to be grateful for even in the midst of all the things that are so challenging and difficult fills us with joy the other thing is, okay, you know, and you know, you can carve a candle, 
with healing, with energy, with optimism, whatever it is that you want, and light it. You can allow it to burn for a certain amount of time or let it burn all the way through, putting it someplace else. When you do that, I think you should honor your courage because all of us are a lot braver than we realize right now. I mean, you, you know, you might be scared, scared you're going to get sick. I've been scared that someone I love is going to get sick, you know, and he's going to suffer. And I've been afraid. I've been frightened of, of a healthcare system being overwhelmed and, and his uh, being triaged because he's older, that he won't get the care that he should have and that I will lose this person that I adore and that who's given me so much happiness. Um, but there's no point in dwelling on that. Joy. Instead, my focus is to use this time that we have together to be um, very grateful that we have this time together, that we are together, and, um, and the joy that I feel in being together. So I'm focused on that. The light helps me to see what is most important and to, and to work with that energy, to work with the energy of joy and to be joyful and to be happy so that he will be too. And he's been doing that for me. Um, so it's important to honor your courage and uh, the illumination that comes from within you, the spirit within you, to face any challenge and to have the energy that you need to get through and to transform things. So, but what's the point of energy if you're not going to use it? So use it, right? Do something. Do something at home that you've been putting off. For me, it's to transform my environment, my office to transform the bigger. You can go out and do some work in a public park that needs to be cleaned up or as long as you're, right? Oh, we're losing. It's okay, well, we have only a few more minutes, so I'll move it along. Uh, water. So water is amazing, and we use it for cleaning, for cleansing anxiety and all that stuff, but we've been doing it by putting our garbage into the water, and one of the things that um, I was taught by working with water when I journeyed for the deck was um, not to put my anxiety or my toxins into the water, but rather to bring water in all of its purity into myself. So I hold the water. First thing in the morning, my first water, I take a glass. I hold it. I thank it for the blessings of life that it's going to give me. I, I put some love, my love for it, for its blessings, for the life that it gives me into the water. And then I drink, which I'm going to do right now. And I feel it going through me. I feel its blessing power going through me. I feel its love going through me. I feel its purity going through me. And it purifies me from within. And then what leaves me is transformed and can be recycled by Mother Nature in an organic and a, and a way that works. The other thing about water is that it's a messenger. So when we put gratitude and love into the water, that water carries love, it carries healing, it carries our prayers for the well-being of those we love and for the planet and for those we don't know who are suffering. We, we can use water now to make a great magic, to offer our love, our gratitude, our energies for healing, for ourselves, for those we love, for those we don't know, and for the planet itself, and offer the water to the earth. And you could do that every day. You can put it into a body of moving water if you're near one or directly into the earth. And if you can't, you could even pour it down the drain. Um, I would rather give it to my house plants than pour it down the drain. But if you don't have plants, you can pour it down the drain, offering it, knowing that that water will go back to the waters of the earth and will circulate and will carry not just yours, but if we're all doing this, it is carrying the magic of our love into the world and helping the world to experience that love because they will drink it and they will experience it, whether they're aware of it or not. And it will help to heal. It will help to heal the wounded hearts that people have. Um, so you put your gratitude, you put your healing energies, and you put your love into the water, which is a messenger, which will carry that into the world. That's a very great and deep magic. And finally, there's earth. And that relates to all of the things um, that we've been shown. 
the herbs of the earth will help us with our uh, with sleep. It will help us with practices that we enjoy by being outdoors, gardening, walking, bicycling, the things that you can still do. The greatest magic occurs in nature because nature makes the greatest magic. So get outside. Being socially distant does not mean being distant from nature. It means keeping space between you and other people so the virus can't be transmitted. It does not mean keeping distance between you and nature. That's what we've been doing and that's part of what led to this problem because our distance from nature has made us treated with terrible disrespect, which is how this virus came to be contracted and spread. So a new relationship with the earth, beginning in healing, can transform this planet after we've gone through this. One of the things that you can do now that it's warming up is to go outside, make an offering, whatever it is, something that the, the um, animals uh, and the birds can appreciate, something that they can eat, lie down on the earth, belly to belly, place your body against the earth and feel the energies of the earth coming up into you. If you can't do that, sit, if you can sit on the ground and ground, right? You send roots down from the base of your spine and draw the energies of the earth up into you and then send the energies down. And when you send those energies down and into the earth, they will travel throughout the planet. Again, sending the magic of healing, receiving the magic of healing as you bring it up into your body and sending it down into the earth to be received by others. So get outside and ground and observe Mother Earth. This is the most extraordinary moment. Even if it's the fall equinox where you are in Australia, as the season is changing and you're turning inward, we here at this moment of rebirth are also being asked to turn inward. But by going outside, we are experiencing the magic of rebirth. It's one of the extraordinary blessings that, the, that Mother Earth gives us. This promise of rebirth is kept every year when the planet comes back to life. And in viewing that and experiencing our connection to the earth when we eat, right? When we make an offering, when we breathe, when we drink water, in these countless ways, we connect to the source of our being. And the nature of that energy is one of love. The earth is our mother and she loves all of creation. She loves all of her children. Ultimately, to me, magic is what happens when we open our hearts to the sacred. That energy flows into us. It flows into us when we breathe. It flows into us when we drink water. It flows into us when we feel the energy of the sun. It flows into us when we eat and it flows from us when we release all of those things, when we return air and water and food back to the earth, back to creation in which we're so deeply intertwined, we are never stronger than when we are aware of our connectedness to Mother Earth and through her to one another. She gives us everything that we need to live. She gives us everything that we need to heal with herbs, with energies and with love. So the impulse now is to shut down. This is not the time to shut down. This is the time to work with our practices, to work with our wisdom, to open up, to open our hearts. This is the time where everything else stops so that we can work on all the parts that have been forgotten and neglected, all the sacred natural parts of our connectedness to the rest of the world and to the deep magic within ourselves and the magic of the rest of the world. It's a time for reflection. It's a time to attend to our personal lives, to our inner lives, to our spiritual lives, and to the life that we are deeply connected to, the life of this planet and all the other beings that share it with us. With our hearts open, we're able to experience those connections and to give it shape with our rituals and our spells and our magic and our dances and our chanting and our sigils and all of our practices and ultimately our lives, which we will begin to live again socially connected. 
But when we return to that, we're going to be returning connected, not by a virus, right? which is just a momentary scourge, but by an awareness, the changed consciousness and opened hearts and a capacity to act in accord with the love that we're all connected to, the love that is the source of life and that is constantly nourishing our lives, that sustains every moment of our being here. That's the greatest magic. That's the reason you're here. And the strange revelation of this time of pandemic is this great magic. You cannot control the things that happen, but you can control how you respond to them. And with our magic, we have an opportunity to engage with the great magic, with the great love from which all of creation was first created, including us. And to return when we have the opportunity in a few weeks or a few months, whatever it is, remade by those magical revelations to help remake the world. Not the world, the human world. To bring that world back into accord with the greater world in which we live, the greater magic in which we live. So, um, so I want to just do one thing. I'm not going to go over to my altar. We'll do that another time. I don't want to disappoint you because I know some of you wanted to see it. I'm going to run away for one second. Yeah, I'm back. Okay, so this is my traditional spring equinox magic, which I've done for countless years. I did this with my coven for 10 years. Each spring equinox, we would plant some zinnia seeds. And then at the fall equinox, we would harvest them. We would cut the flowers and dry them. And um, we would plant the seeds again the next spring equinox. So I have some zinnia seeds here that I'm going to plant. Here they are. You can see them. I brought these back from Italy. I brought these back from a place that I've wanted to visit since I first discovered um, the magic within myself, which is always bringing me back to Italy. Um, and I read a marvelous book about um, the Villa of San Michele, and it was started by um, a Swiss uh, doctor. He he built it out of nothing on the beautiful Isle of Capri. And there he offered free medical services to the people who lived on uh, the Isle of Capri. And um, it was an incredibly magical place. And he wrote a very magical book about it. Um, and it's very pagan. And uh, Pan has a very um, keen presence in the book. It's a wonderful book. And I, I suggest you read it. Um, Anyway, I had read it years ago and had always wanted to go. And finally, I got to go. And um, I, I visited there several times uh, on th this wonderful trip that I carefully planned. And uh, it was extraordinary and much smaller than in my imagination. And but every bit is beautiful and er and probably more magical. And there were zinnias. And uh, I took a few and I dried them and I've been keeping the seeds for a very magical moment, and this is it. So at this spring equinox, um, I am in your presence of my community, connected to all of you, um, connected to um, the magic that um, weaves its web and binds us all together with the energy of love in healing, in revelation, in joy, uh, and in rebirth. Um, in honor of this remarkable man uh, who gave his life to healing others, um, the flowers from his garden, which I plant now in this little bit of uh, earth. It's a little, it's a little, right? Little pod for growing seeds. So I'm planting the seeds from the garden of San Michele on the other side of the Atlantic where everyone in Italy has been suffering so and showing us what lies ahead in our future um, if we don't act swiftly and with great care and compassion, aware 
that we need to keep distance now to slow the spread of the scourge. But on the other side of it comes healing and rebirth. And so waters of life to seeds of life into Mother Earth. May we all heal and grow and return to life wiser, more joyful, more loving, more able to create the beauty that we're meant to share. I wish you all health. I see Anna from Milano. Anna, we are all sending you love and healing energies. Stay safe. All of you, please stay safe. Keep distance, but stay connected. We would always say our circle is open, but never broken. We may be distant, but we are always connected. We send you love and healing and energies and um, light in uh, the dark passage ahead. It's always within and it's always all around us. Stay connected to Mother Earth and we stay connected to one another. I send you the blessings of spring equinox. Thank you for being here with me. I love you all. It meant the world to, to, to have this time with you. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Love you. Oh, <laughs> I'm supposed to tell you two things. Uh, quite a number of folks have been reaching out asking uh, if I'm available for, for um, personal and spiritual counseling sessions. I only do a few weeks. But I know that a lot of people have been in need, and so I'm expanding hours, and you'll be able to, you can reach me through um, the website. So I'm, I'm going to try to be more available over these few weeks um, to provide counseling for people who want to speak. We can figure out how to do it online. And um, I'm also thinking about doing a little Instagram kind of daily blog of a uh, of, uh, witch in quarantine. So... Um, just little daily practices and, and staying in touch as we go through this journey. So we're doing it together. So um, uh, we send love and energy to everyone uh, in Italy and to all of you around. We're here for you. Um, I'm here for you. We're here for each other. And uh, we may be distant, but we're always connected. Love to you all. <laughs>